the information and the project that will be presented to you now is world exclusive. You are, you in this room, you're the first to hear about this. Let's welcome Lorenz Fora, founder and partner at Fora Hugi, co-founder of Impact Gestart, Matthias Inalbon, the CEO of Bergbahn Destination Gestart, and Dan Oxlin, chairman of the management board OEEN and CEO of Green Energy Ventures. Lorenz, take it away. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm pretty nervous to, uh, to stay here. <laughs> nervous because of the audience, the nice audience. Nervous because of our project, uh, Sol Sarin. Um, it's a very revolutionary project we are planning here up in Stadt. I'm very proud and happy to be the project leader for the moment for, for, um, for this project. And we can start this project um, because the, uh, the government made a new law which is quite revolutionary which allows now to build up projects we are never we, we did not had uh, the opportunity to build till now for for many years so we do not have not even one such a solar project no. yeah Last October, the Parliament created this new rule. We have one of the creators, Standerat Rudi Noser, with us. We have other parliamentarians here in the audience. It's not working. Um, and it should de-block a lot of other projects. And the project's going to have a support of about 3.4 billion Swiss francs. For, uh, to build up to, uh, two terawatt hours in the next three years. And now Matthias and Dan are going to explain that we want to be part of one <laughs> of these two uh, terawatt. Um. Obviously. <laughs> Thank you for that. I think you have the first word, Matthias, right? Exactly. Okay. Welcome from my side, but also welcome here in Gstaad in a nice uh, mountain world. Just look outside, the sun is rising, and this sun we will need later on. We have unused resource here, as mentioned, the sun, which will take us a sustainable step forward in the coming years. In my function as CEO of the railway company, I'm strongly connected with the topic of, electric, of electricity. For example, currently, no company guarantees us uh, the, electric, uh, or the electricity for the snowmaking uh, system. So, a small company, we have to buy the, the electricity each day or each 15 minutes on a daily stock exchange. It's quite difficult for a small company, but it's the real reality. The security of energy supply in Switzerland is at is at risk. According to experts, the situation will, will look even worse or more critical next winter. Electric, electricity demand will increase. There are more and more electrical cars and nuclear plants will be uh, being shut down. And then from where does the electricity comes? I'm not only concerned in my business function about this question, also in my private life. That's why the reason first Lawrence and I, and afterwards uh, uh, Dan, joined the project. We have, we have really uh, worked on this topic and initiated the project, or this project, with heart and soul with the vision, a destination to become energy self-sufficient. A big milestone, but we are sure that we can reach this milestone. There are different concepts in what photovoltaic. On one, uh, on one hand, you have the houses or the facet on the, on, on the houses, at the houses. 
And on the other uh, hand, you have a large scale, large scale system. Here is an example of Gondor Solar, which is uh, uh, between the valley and Italy. I think PV systems on the roof is quite a good, a good, uh, a good system, but nevertheless, we have a problem there. At the winter, there is snow on it, and we have, or they don't produce winter electricity. Look out, there are several houses there. There is not lot, uh, there is little snow, and the roofs are all covered. Furthermore, the roofs are not southern or mostly not southern exposure and the expansion on the roof that we will real, that we will have on all roofs uh, pv panels will take 30 or 40 years but the winter electricity we need now an alternative uh, uh, installation would be pv panels on facades but in order to reach a large potential, every house would be to have solar facets. You heard, each house, and then not only the balcony, the whole side uh, or the whole south side. May imagine that. The building style in Sunland is unique. In my opinion, the article style was good protected in the past, and I think the, the Charlotte style is also a USB of the region. Fortunately, we have a third option. If you look at the landscape of uh, Saanen, we have about 120 uh, queer kilometers. And if, if we use only one queer meter or less than 1% of Saanen and install their large scaled PV installation, we can supply the whole region with electricity. Unbelievable, isn't it? The sun gives energy, and with the right uh, installation, even winter electricity. And the best of all, we can first produce and then consume the electric power here in the region. From the region, for the region. Within the first project phase, we check it about 20 sites. On this, four to six sites are very interesting and meet the requirements. Important uh, criteria are the size, the winter production, uh, that there are no non-protection uh, area, etc. I would like to summarize three points. Sustainable electricity from the region, uh, from the region for the region. Second, that without restriction for the farmer, you see the cows are on the, under these panels, and furthermore, all direct payments to the far farmer will be continued to pay by the federal government. And third, it's a big contribution to secure the energy supply here in the region, but also in Switzerland. That's not only an idea, a uh, project idea or a, a project at, at the starting. There is already done a feasibility uh, study and uh, the company of Dan, who is also in the project, will now speak a little bit more in detail regarding uh, PV, uh, or large scaled PV plants, and also about the project. So, Sarin, huh? Exactly. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Matthias. Maybe uh, it's absolutely great. It's absolutely great to be here. Thank you all. I mean, I'll pick it up a little bit from my history, actually, uh, first of all, and uh, speak about, uh, actually, when then it comes, impacts of hybrid renewable systems of energy of basically the sun, the wind, and what our nature creates. Huh? Um, brilliantly, first of all, uh, I'll go a little bit into Europe, but uh, how I came into that, and I'm 27 years now in renewables actually, my mother told me once, uh, if you see something dirty in the forest, uh, pick it up. Huh? 
and uh, I did that. <laughs> so uh, when I was five, I cleaned the forest, and from an association point of view, that there were 70, 80 people which were applauding, okay? And then I recognized that that's something good to clean the forest, and since then, I got my blood and I was never basically leaving the energy again. So um, let's look first a little bit into the European uh, renewable energy installations, uh, which are currently soaring. Uh, and, and for me, you know, and, and, and for everyone which is following the press a little bit and following everything in that regard, uh, it's basically really cool to see that the industrialized energy transition we long waited for is happening now. It's happening today and is basically full in scaling. So first of all, uh, with wind and PV capacity, uh, which has more than doubled, I'm sorry, I have to sit a little bit on the right because the monitor is out <laughs> to see what I'm talking about, but I should be fine. <coughs> so actually, uh, it more than doubled the installation in uh, the last 10 years, and the re rest growth, so renewable energy systems growth, is expected to double again within the upcoming five years. So storage is key, uh, we have hydropower capacity, which remain stable in the past and basically saturated as a technology. That's why new technologies have to come and pick up and our increased demand has to be relatively sharply switched over to renewable energy generation in order to soar and buoyance the system. Also, <coughs> the other lines, maybe you see when I do they take the laser, is the LCOEs. So the levelized cost of generation of these technologies have basically sunken a lot. And with PV utility scale and wind onshore, we are already far below 100 euros of cost per megawatt hour. Huh? That's a little bit the case. And um, also we, we soon have the situation, I think that's also very important, that uh, renewable energy systems will be absolutely more economic than fossil fuel installations or fossil fuels in basically driving the industry. So having said this, uh, quickly to my person, I basically am the founder and owner of the OEN group. We actually have 27 years, as I said, of experience. We work on 22 gigawatt of systems at the moment. It's roughly six times what is historically installed in Switzerland. Then actually we have uh, multi-technology in renewables. Uh, we do innovation, it's our value preposition, and uh, we are covering from technology to finance the value chain. So we have also been a little bit uh, in involved in the European Commission advisory, uh, REST portfolios ac across Europe, and government European REST hybrid projects as a partner. So these are basically a little bit my backgrounds. And the company which is now in Solsari, in which Matthias mentioned before, is Green Energy Venture, which is one of the oldest advisory firms in the European renewable energy industry. Actually, it obtained uh, unparalleled integration along the REST value chain from manufacturing to energy sales and started in 98 with that. <coughs> so uh, since then, from manufacturing over project development, bankability, financing, structuring, supply chain management, construction, commission, commissioning, asset operations, commercial and energy sales, PPAs which are required to bring the energy from renewable assets really to the grid and then to the end consumer basically is what we inherit and what we do basically as I think one of the only companies in this integration scenario and along the value chains of uh, European uh, renewable energies at the moment. So and that basically um, <coughs> is a little bit the background how we entered uh, the collaboration. So now uh, utility scale <laughs> renewable energy systems like Solsarin, they have basically chances which they create but they have also limitations. And especially in rural regions where we are, I mean, beautiful rural regions, as we have multiply heard this, this uh, session. Nevertheless, I think I'll take the picture which Matthias left the stage with. <clears throat> it's very good to say that today's applications are not meant to generate around the clock, nor meant to work in direct synergy with other technologies, and that's what we have to change. So when we talk about next generation of systems, ideally they are designed decentrally, yeah? they are designed load curve adapted. And why do I say load curve adapted? Because historically, large scale, so utility, renewable energy assets, they were built just as projects. Okay? There was a big wind farm, as a big photovoltaic field, or there was storage like, like uh, hydropower storage or whatever storage technology. 
but no one of the project developers, because the feed-in tariffs were so great, they saw the money. Eh? They said, ah, bigger the project, better the project. But it's not the case anymore. So here in Gstaad, <coughs> and especially with the valley ships we have here, we have to adapt our renewable energy systems decentrally to be built. We have to hybridize them. And most important, the load curve or the consumption curve adaption must be made. So that renewable energies are not only solar, ha, ah, nice high peak in summer, but nothing worse in winter time, okay? <laughs> and that's also what we are focusing a little bit with the solar in project. So new energy technology shall try to reduce local storage, so mainly batteries. And then actually it's important to say that the capability <coughs> to deliver energy when and where needed is where renewable energy systems should strive and thrive to go, okay? Um, <clears throat> that includes AI, that includes smart metering and smart steering of generation assets within a grid of these central systems and enable new kinds of application in and outside the mountain valley. So I come to that in a minute. Huh? First, the project. Solsarin was not yet seen actually in public, so this is the absolute first time we are presenting it, or Matthias has uh, basically presented it, and, and Lawrence and Matthias, thank you very much for the opportunity that I can be here. Five, six weeks ago, I have to say, I have not, I have not had a clue uh, what to do about uh, basically the feasibility study, and we ramped it very qu quickly, and I also appreciate the team, eight people, which has basically made that possible. So, high-altitude PV installations. What is that, actually? Those are technically challenging due to the combination of soil conditions, High wind speeds, we have uh, snow loads, oh sorry, <laughs> that was a little bit too fast. Snow loads, um, which we have distance to grid connection point, but also produce 25% more power than 500 meters above sea level, okay? And that is something which you have to say is really important. When we look into the capex comparison, we have basically a much higher capex, so a cost of the system, but we also have 35% more energy. When I can talk about 1,020 kilowatt hours, uh, basically, which, which we can generate with a, with a kilowatt peak installed power on, on the valley, we have 1,580 actually in 2,000 meters uh, altitude. And that is what, what we want to say. The high alpine systems allow to work with bifacial PV modules because uh, 200 days they are having a splendid albedo, and albedo effect is the reflection effect from the surface, which the light basically goes to the backside of the generator, <coughs> the so-called solar module. And that is basically <coughs> 200 days of, of a year. It's the case in, in actually uh, Gstaad, or above 2,000 meters in Switzerland. So it's very important and increases a lot, not included in this calculation yet, because we don't know exactly the values, but increases a lot, again, the efficiency of the systems. Huh? So, Solsarin versus Gstaad demand. I mean, the interesting thing when, when Matthias and Lawrence talked about uh, Solsarin, uh, I said, hey, what's the, what's the profile? And they said, yeah, we estimate like that. And they were good with their estimates, but accurate estimates must be the foundation for an economic calculation of such assets, actually. And therefore, we have two things done. First of all, we have brilliantly looked at the profiling, and when you see that, we have simulated the Gstaad town consumption, okay? So it's actually the gray. It's not so sharp, it's a little bit unfortunate, but however, the gray is the Gstaad consumption which we simulated, so from the town. And the uh, monthly production from Solsarin is very, uh, is very actually uh, atypical, atypically strong because um, the anglicism, so the wedging of the module, and also the placing of the modules, allow for a very high winter power. Huh? That's, that's what we want to reach. And that's also Solar Express in Switzerland requires winter power strength. So uh, basically, that is what we reach with these kind of um, production profiles. And that's also <coughs> very important. It's, it's an absolute figure, and then the relative figure, Solsarin outperforms also any other PV system with an overall higher production, especially during the energy problematic winter months. And that's what we see here very well. So I think, uh, and I have to translate that, this is a specific yield per month in kilowatt hours, kilowatt peak, a little bit technical, 
But what we see is the blue line, a standard system. Do you see that also from here? Should I put the chair away or is it that is good? See, yeah, that's good. Okay. So um, that's basically what we see here. And we see solsarin, which, which have a lot more average <coughs> gigawatt hours per month in the equation. So that is so important because with such an energy grading, you have little effects basically in terms of differentiation of energies, but high effects in the intra-year comparison of the entire generation of such assets, okay? Then <clears throat> the effect of high altitude systems in wind and PV, that's something uh, the Swiss program focus develops into. Uh, it's also important that uh, we see that uh, the LCOEs, which is the levelized cost of electricity which can be generated through a renewable asset, is almost similar when we look into wind and solar on the altitude level. So but what I want to say is that when we look into the profile of wind and solar, they are controverse, okay? So the profiles of solar and wind, wind is usually in winter powering a lot, huh? and in summer also. But solar is powering usually in summer a lot, and in winter there is the best. But with solar sarin, with the increased winter powering, and with the increased slipstreams and strengths of winds, and the combination of those, we can make a profile matching from only solar and wind, which is already almost like a base load profile. And that's something which is absolutely new in the industry, and we should follow that. So here, <coughs> sorry, last thing. Here we have strong production synergies and a possibility to reduce the LCOE3, LCOE through hybridization and things like shared grid connection costs or basically shared storage costs or whatever they're basically the measure is. Furthermore, the alignment of the technologies, in our eyes, is the way ahead. Alignment of technologies, I mean, we have Solsarin, but exactly what, <coughs> and that was a very important discussion we had in the team, in the Solsarin team, we were thinking about, hey, what is going on in Gstaad? <laughs> so we don't know so well energetically, but clearly we have uh, standard energy providers and, and basically uh, BKW and the grid, whatever. Uh, but what we said is also that wind uh, hydropower, which is already existent here, and we have to reuse with the power deterrent, deterrence of, of all these basically combiner ships, hydrogen for public transportation uh, propulsion, actually, and that uh, basically very importantly, but also biogas, I mean, the farms and everything is there, you know, like, like you have to understand, and I think we all have to understand that this is basically a combination and the hybridization, as I said in the beginning, and the adaption of the load curve in the concepts is exactly the most important thing to share the costs, make an absolute high efficiency in terms of load curve matching and have a modern chance giving environment in order to basically see what, what we can have in the future from it. Apart naturally of carbon neutrality uh, for countries uh, like Switzerland. And there that's very important. <coughs> we have a vast potential for alternative energies because the combination will cause effects of central importance, which are daily needs, but also peripheral importance or effects, which can be basically used energies for things we don't yet imagine. We have uh, talked about a wave surf, you know, kind of application where, where, where kinder and also <laughs> us, we love it as surfers, <laughs> uh, basically, where we can basically ride these, these applications, you know. And, and whatever fantastic things uh, there can be done, it's just important that the technologies will learn to walk without subsidies and will develop, but only when we kind of care that spare head adaptions happen. That's a little bit a summary of such argument. Huh? Okay, um, then I think the centrality of the approach, and that's the <coughs> precedent example here, when we had the team sessions. So developers, the landowners, the municipality, the suppliers, the investors, the grid operators, the advisors, the project collaboration, without that, we will not make it. We will not make it in time, we will not make it in favor, we will not make it in excellence and not make it in cost. So. <laughs> Together, that's basically the central edge and Sol Sarin is based on all those pillars. Huh?
by 100%. One missing. Which one? Consumers. Yeah, the, uh, it's, it's basically the project development. But thank you very much. I <laughs> we come to the consumers, absolutely. <laughs> It increases the public acceptance, remote locations, and it's good to have this interaction. I like it. Thank you very much. Reduce technical risks due to collaboration between grid operators, developers, advisors, and suppliers. Uh, improved financial feasibility for in investors, incorporation of landowners' requirements, and municipality to support and profit at the same time. Huh? So that's basically a little bit what we can say from a techno-economic view on the project. Environmentally, very important as well. <coughs> it's not yet consumer, but it's almost consumer. Uh, we have uh, these alpine solar projects, which are the future for Switzerland's agri agrivoltaic compatibility, also chosen in geolocations, and harmony uh, uh, with livestock, nature preservation, and the farming situations will, will, will definitely play a key role. So here, uh, CO2 neutrality is inside already. <coughs> we also have the land op usage optimization, because you see the livestock is underneath the construction, and that is not the fairy tale construction here, that is what we plan to install, kind of, not yet fixed, but it's just important to say that these installations will have an absolute neutrality when it comes to livestock, when it comes to biodiversity. <coughs> uh, we have uh, positive impacts from certain studies from the, from the MIT on the biodiversity, and also the fostering pollinator biodiversity is like a very important aspect here. Also, uh, well-being livestock and the crops protection. So, <coughs> just to give you a little bit uh, a view on, on what we have thought also in the development team about it. So, in the end, and this picture is basically not, only f not even five days old. I took it while, while skiing in the region a little bit off. Uh, that's basically what I want to say. With the Solsarin project, <coughs> Impact Start conveys a great opportunity for, for this region. This is also a really great occasion, and I talk to many people about bringing independence, bringing comfort, energy cost, security, so that we can say what the energy cost will be in the future and grant it, and compatibility to future forms of applications like hydrogen, biomass, and more. So let's take this chance of a lifetime, I say, to shape and form the carbon-neutral footprint for the energies made in the region for the regions, and in the end, Impact Start. Thank you very much. Uh, stay, stay up here, because we have some time for questions. That was the first question there. I mean, this is the first time you've presented it, so you have no clue what kind of questions usually come, right? So we'll get the first taste of... Yeah. What I have a little bit of a clue for? of questions which usually come to the topics, but uh, it's a different, different audience, different question, I would say, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Anyone? There we go. Oh, we're here. Yeah, there's two here. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for your uh, presentation. I have a question about uh, when you are showing uh, the different pillar uh, to have uh, a successful uh, project, uh, and then uh, there was another person mentioning uh, about the customer. So based on your experience uh, so far, because I'm familiar yeah. on uh, the supply side uh, and also grid operation, because yeah. it's the area in which I was working. So far, especially in Switzerland, who will be the key, let's say, shareholder but, uh, for which you needed to have uh, the support to make it? to make it happen, because there are five, uh, five pillars, but which one uh, is the key one uh, to give the green light? Maybe, Lawrence, you can go for this one. Because as a supplier, I would say, if you have the project, uh, I will be happy <coughs> to follow them, or uh, to support and so on, and also from a grid operation. So the question is, uh, based on your experience, who will be the focus that you should have uh, to get investment, to get support? Thank you. Um, as I said uh, at the beginning, we, we tried to uh, build up a public-private partnership. Now we have the municipality already as a, in, the, in this uh, stadium of the project as a partner. They support us um, a lot. And in financing, we uh, intend to have, you see it here on this uh, chart, um, we would like to, uh, to raise um, uh, money also with, uh, with the founding members of uh, Impact Start. So we're going to prepare once we are ready with the project, we're going to prepare some uh, tickets. 
And, uh, but the main uh, investment comes for actor equity comes also from <laughs> people uh, out of impact start. And 60% uh, comes from the government, the first 60%. Thank you. There was another question here. Hi, thank you very much. I'm, I'm Trudy. I have a question about your constant delivery model together with wind. So is it mm -hmm. your strategy to wait and or make that happen? And if you don't, you fail? Or, or what about storage? Could you, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think no problem. Um, the intention of the slide was brilliantly to show the precedent subsidy technologies of Switzerland and how they interact together. Okay, that's, that's basically uh, up front. Second thing is, Obviously, Solserin is, is Solserin and not Winserin. Uh, it's, it's, it's positive, but uh, not yet. Uh, we have a brilliant concept to inherit into this concept from IG Start actually wind power. But what could be done and what is basically the, the great opportunity on our interaction open market grid that we could partner with wind generators, okay, with wind projects, and that basically could be mashed up in the, in the, in the load curve. And that is something which we just wanted to say. And it was a little bit too outrageous in order to basically basically display also other technologies and compare every, everything, you know, when I have a minute for a slide, uh, that's why I took only wind, but uh, I think there is the, the internal sense or the integral sense to actually combine these energies, which are subsidied, but not only those, to an entire entity which, which is basically powering the future a little bit, so to say. Does that answer your question? Or Ah, storage, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so storage, I think storage, especially when, when it comes to battery storage um, and the ingredients of batteries, actually, we are looking to avoid battery in basically future concepts. So, or to reduce the share of batteries in the future concepts to the extent that we potentially can work with, in Switzerland, made molten salt batteries, but basically they have a little bit different characteristics. Obviously, when we want to have, and that's uh, what we have to say, uh, an around-the-clock solution, we have to go with batteries, but for example, a power lake, which is given here in the region, would basically by 100% replace such battery, and that would be an ideal, basically, enhancement to the concept. So we try to technically, to answer your question, uh, load and, and uh, design the systems like that. They do not use batteries, but storage is needed anyway. Yeah. Okay? Perfect, thank you. <laughs> uh, Dan, very briefly, just how scalable is this and can you export this? If it works, can you export this to other regions? I mean, or is it really specific yeah. to Gestalt? I think um, that's a good question and it's not uh, basically a question if it's scalable. We know that it works because as I said, our company basically, we have made more than 20 gigawatts of actually uh, solar power systems in, in more than 17 countries meanwhile. So also combiner energies, uh, there are little tricks and hints like DC coupling of such assets where, where, where basically we don't transfer to the AC to basically save 7% around of basically uh, coupling energies, uh, etc, etc. But obviously, yeah, this can be scaled like limitless and it should be and is designed for exactly that. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Dan. welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, there's two more questions. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, I find it a little bit ambitious, uh, your timetable, um, to raise now uh, this year, then you like to construct next year, and then 25 you will deliver? Is it right? End of 25, so after 25, yeah. We have, we have to. That's, that's part of the, uh, um, of the, of the rules. Made, made by this law that uh, this project will held in the next uh, three years. So we have to start this year now with planning and next year to construct. And in 25, we have to, uh, to uh, spend about 10%, at least 10% uh, to the wire. To the grid, yeah. <laughs> the grid. So I mean, when we look from an industrial point of view, there's no problem with this timeline, because when we build usually such assets, okay, we are building them with a speed, when you have a team of 120 people, of about 2 megawatts per day, okay? So that's basically the average. When we see 70 megawatts here divided by 235, so that's not really applicable in alpine scenarios, which absolutely I understand your question for, 
But to build such assets uh, in basically one and a half years after a permitting period, there is, there is no single problem. And I have nearly the same project in Mecklenburg, and I talk now five years ah, yeah. with landowners. Maybe we work together. And all the <laughs> administration <laughs> and so on. So yeah. um, I, it's a fantastic project. Mm -hmm. but, um, uh, Look, the optimization, I think, Lawrence, you can also say something about the political background. The, the chance we have is reasoned by the fact that we have substantial carryovers in terms of uh, political shifts from Bern, from our basically uh, mm -hmm. capital, and that is basically flattening the grounds for it, as, as I understand. But I am the technical, techno-economic partner. Maybe you ask also the initiators the a little bit. The technical uh, the issue yeah. is not the problem. Yes, exactly. It's really the landowners yeah. and the administration and yeah. uh, all of these um, um, things. You, you show us the bubble with the yeah. uh, stakeholders, and there are yeah. a lot of stakeholders oh, in yeah, your uh, plan. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that's, it's, it's really a, a complex project that's, of course, like that. I can only say that uh, the last uh, few weeks, each evening, I was by a farmer. <laughs> there were a big discussion, but the, the local people are open. They are interesting. They see that, then, that they can also profit and they also give somebody uh, to, to the region that we have enough energy. Furthermore, it's really this urgent uh, new federal law which define that we need winter electricity and that they will give 60% uh, of on value on this investment, but they have to, or we have to build 10% of the in installation until uh, 2000, uh, 2025, and the installation must be finished at 27. For, from the construction, that's not like a house where you need concrete. Everything is there. You can put this, uh, these panels on mm -hmm. this land with a special uh, Schraubenfundament. I don't know how to say that. In Screw foundations, yeah, <laughs> no problem. It, it's quite easy from, from this side, but it's challenging and uh, we are not at the end. We have to go this uh, planning process, and uh, but I look forward uh, to do something for the region. I understand there are many more questions in this room. Unfortunately, we have to move on. These gentlemen will be around. You can put your questions, address your questions to these gentlemen directly over coffee or now. So please get in touch with them. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.